was you, I would just like freak out and get really drunk and then tell someone I was pregnant. The office's Kelly Kapoor knows how to get what she wants. Ultimatums are key. She's adept at flattery. From now on, you guys are no longer losers, so give yourselves a round of applause. Lies big and small roll right off her tongue. But you're not supposed to wear white to a wedding. I know, but there was an emergency. I look really good in white. And when all else fails, she can always make herself the victim. Do you have a question, Kelly? Yeah, I have a lot of questions. Number one, how dare you? These are all the classic traits of a manipulator, someone who exerts control over others by exploiting their vulnerabilities and playing on their emotions. Can you make yourself cry? No problem. And yet, despite her untrustworthiness and underhandedness, Kelly is also one of the series' most likable characters. There's just something endearing, even relatable, about Kelly's desperation to be recognized and loved. My resolution was to get more attention. What is it about Kelly Kapoor that makes her coworkers and the audience excuse her manipulative behavior and even embrace it? One and two and cross and cross and down, sexy, sexy, sexy. You guys got that? Here's our take on what makes Kelly such a master of manipulation and why we end up giving her the attention and affection she demands, even if we know we're being played. Who am I? I'm Kelly Kapoor, the business bitch. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified about all of our new videos. This video is brought to you by NordVPN, the world's fastest and most secure virtual private network. Right now, you can click the link in the description below, nordvpn.com slash the take to get 70% off a three-year plan. Our code will be expiring in the next few weeks, so don't wait. Click now to pay only $3.49 per month and enter the code THETAKE to get an extra month of NordVPN for free. At first glance, Kelly seems to have at least a few manipulative traits that could be called Machiavellian. Well, you have to make a choice. It's either your daughter or me. Named for the 16th century Italian diplomat Niccolo Machiavelli, the term describes the kind of morally dubious scheming he believed was key to taking and maintaining power. For Machiavelli, it was far better to be feared than loved, an ethical question that leaders still grapple with today. Would I rather be feared or loved? Easy, both. I want people to be afraid of how much they love me. But while Kelly would definitely rather be loved, she still exhibits a lot of the things that psychotherapist Sherry Jacobson attributes to a Machiavellian personality. For instance, Kelly comes across as charming and extremely confident. What are your weaknesses? I don't have any ass She uses flattery often as a way to conceal her true feelings and bend people to her will. Those glasses are so cool. Really? Yeah, you look like Lisa Loeb or Tina Fey or someone. You should definitely wear them all the time. Guess who just became the cutest girl in the office? Kelly has also been known to manipulate others to get ahead. For example, playing up her ethnicity for a chance to move up at work. Namaste. Oh, dear God. She will lie and deceive when it's required to get her way, and she rationalizes her deception as justified. I lied, whatever, just fire me. But you know what? I did it because you guys didn't come to my party, and you said you would try to, and then you didn't even show up. She's also capable of causing others harm to achieve her means. This girl was really rude to me at the mall, mm -hmm. so I created a fake IM account from a hot guy at her high school, and now I'm trying to make her anorexic. And she is not always aware of the consequences of her actions. You lied about being pregnant. Right? So? You really don't understand why that might make me kind of angry. No. We're never getting back together. Why not? But while Kelly displays some Machiavellian tendencies, she isn't sinister about them. In fact, compared to the manipulative behavior displayed by a lot of other Dunder Mifflin employees, Ryan, to give the impression of sales, recorded them twice. Uh, another good term is fraud. Go on. Lying down. Right. There's a blanket in here. I think you're a witch. Kelly seems downright innocuous. I talk a lot, so I've learned to just tune myself out. As Machiavelli himself believed, and Michael Scott paraphrased, But sometimes the ends justify the mean. In Kelly's case, her end is simple. She wants to be loved. I want you to tell me that you care about me. That is what I want. And she wants other people to think she's special. You could ask me, Kelly, what's the biggest company in the world? And I'd be like, blah, 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 giving you the exact right answer. These are ego-driven desires, 
but they're also universal ones. And the fact that Kelly goes to such manipulative lengths to attain them is what makes them funny. Kelly Kapoor, what a delicious surprise. <laughs> Professor Powell, you are on speakerphone. Uh, why? Beyonce, pink the color, pink the person, hot dogs, basically anything that is awesome. Kelly's preoccupations and her manipulative instincts are decidedly adolescent. She loves clothes, fashion show, fashion show, fashion show at lunch, boys, oh my god, he is so cute. Would you talk to him for me and see if he likes me? And celebrity gossip. Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes, they had a baby and they named it Surrey. And then Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, they had a baby too. And both babies are amazing. Her ideas about love all seem to be shaped by rom-coms. I never thought of him in that way. But I guess in most romantic comedies, the guy you're supposed to be with is the one that you never thought of in that way. We're running off into the sunset. Oh, and that is what they call a meet cute. This reflects some of star Mindy Kaling's own obsessions, as she would later expand on in The Mindy Project. I'm basically Sandra Bullock. But as Kaling also told Time Out in 2012, Kelly Kapoor was not all that autobiographical. We based her character on a mean teenager. I just want you to know that I will be mean to Jessica if you want me to be. Oh, no, no, it's fine, Kelly. It's really no problem. I was already planning on being mean to her. And indeed, Kelly is often seen verbally harassing her peers. I don't talk trash. I talk smack. And cruelly excluding others. I heard that you were looking for someone to replace Ryan. This isn't radio, though. You know, there's a visual component to what we're doing. In the language and underhanded methods of the typical mean girl. Oh my god, I love your skirt. Where did you get it? That is the ugliest effing skirt I've ever seen. Oh my god, I love it. Kelly also uses manipulation strategies that parenting researcher Tyler Jacobson has identified as common to teens, like guilt tripping, a means of emotional manipulation that can even tip over into threats of suicide. If I get to stay and Ryan is laid off, I will kill myself. If they get married before I do, I'm gonna kill myself. Basically, nobody does anything for me anymore unless I threaten to kill myself. Kelly also frequently plays the victim, whether it's in her relationships, Ryan used me as an object, or even just to bring attention to herself. She's hot, okay? Because if you are saying that Hillary Swank isn't hot, then you're saying I'm not hot, because obviously I'm not as hot as Hillary Swank. Finally, Kelly has a teenager's emotional volatility and sense of retaliation, quick to lash out with hurtful words. I guess maybe she could marry a meth dealer with crafts. Or even big explosive actions. My boyfriend dumped me, so I stole his boat. Also like a teen, Kelly is image conscious and obsessed with emulating the icons of pop culture she worships. All I have to do is drink maple syrup, lemon juice, cayenne pepper, and water for all three meals. I look amazing. She's adopted the self-centered attitudes she's learned from celebrities and reality TV. You can't click on these Kardashian links. That's why you have so many viruses. Well, help me. In fact, all her interests and goals seem to revolve around what she's seen in magazines, TV, and movies. You know what, Dwight? You need to go back there, and you need to pretty woman their asses. Mimicking the most famous people in this country offers Kelly, who's clearly conflicted about her Indian heritage, Well, you know my middle name is? Rajani Gonda, and I hate it! The comfort of cultural assimilation. It's to pick up my little sisters from school. We're really tight. We're like the Kardashians. But most importantly, pop culture feeds directly into Kelly's love of manipulation. Kelly longs to live in the petty, hyper-competitive world of reality TV. I have warned everyone that I will come for them if they even dare try to copy anything that I'm doing this holiday season. And because there's a documentary crew filming her, she technically does. You know what, Kelly? This is the real world, not the real world, Scranton. Kelly performs for the cameras just like one of her reality TV idols, bringing the schemes and the melodrama. For Kelly, being a mean girl or a Kardashian is the height of status. They're the stars of the show, and everything they do is inherently special. Elevating every part of her life into drama is how Kelly gets the attention she desires above all else. I think sometimes people are really mean to the hot, popular girl. And nowhere is her thirst for drama more evident than in her most defining relationship. Over the weekend, Ryan, Bailey, Howard, and I got divorced. It was like destiny. I, 
I realized that for whatever reason, I just couldn't do better than Kelly. In Ryan, Kelly meets her Machiavellian match, which is bad news for both of them. We belong, we belong together, Ryan. Their toxic romance is based entirely in manipulation, whether it's the outright lies that Kelly tells to keep Ryan around, I hope you're still committed because I'm pregnant, or just the constant undermining that Ryan regularly employs when talking to her. Yeah, but you lie all the time. You lie for no reason. Ryan, you just like to lie. I'd die for you, too. You really would? While The Office gives us several true love stories to aspire to, Ryan and Kelly's relationship is probably one of its more true-to-life. Everyone who watches the show thinks of themselves as Jim and Pam, but are probably much more like Ryan and Kelly. As Kaling and BJ Novak have explained, Ryan and Kelly are an only slightly exaggerated version of their own dysfunctional dynamic in the real world. We were sort of these always clashing soulmates on the writing staff. And people were very amused by that and decided to write a Ryan Kelly romance based on that. So why does Kelly keep putting up with it? So you're dumping me? Let's be adults about this. Let's have sex one more time. And if you have any extra cash, that would be amazing. Especially when she has better options. Kelly's brief romance with Daryl is the complete opposite of her affair with Ryan. One based in respect and honesty, which only proves confusing to Kelly. Daryl Philbin is the most complicated man that I have ever met. I mean, who says exactly what they're thinking? In season 9, Kelly finally seems to find a real future with the handsome, successful pediatrician Ravi, who genuinely loves her. Now you look at me like you're adoring me, and I'm gonna look at the camera like I don't even know you're there. I do adore you. But ultimately, both of these romances are short-lived. Ryan manipulates her into breaking it off with both men. Maybe we weren't right together, but it's weird. I'd rather she be alone than with somebody. Is that love? It works because, in fact, Kelly doesn't actually want to be treated with consistent love, honesty, and respect. Um, why did I just receive a mass email from you that said that you don't like me? Do you realize how hard that makes me like you, Andy? To Kelly, a reality TV addict and teenager at heart, manipulation and melodrama are what romance is all about. Ravi makes me incredibly happy. And Ryan puts me through so much drama. So I guess I just have to decide which of those is more important to me. So while Ryan doesn't give her that healthy marriage and kids relationship she says and even thinks she's looking for. Kelly and I have both agreed that we would just have fun. I'm learning that fun for Kelly is getting married and having babies immediately with me. He does give her the drama and excitement that, deep down, she really wants most of all. You gave your baby an allergic reaction just to talk to me? Kelly Kapoor may come across as equal parts vapid and vindictive, self-sabotaging and unsure of what she really wants, but we also see her grow over the course of the series, developing strong friendships with her workmates who ultimately want the best for her. Remember how it felt when he cheated on you, though? Which time? Meanwhile, we also find ourselves loving and rooting for her. And not just because Kelly is a relative good compared to some of the more openly malicious and conniving characters we meet. We can recognize how Kelly is the product of our modern, gossip-fueled culture, one that celebrates manipulation and competitiveness, creates a thirst for melodrama, and rewards the vain and the self-centered. I think we should do cupcakes. I am one of the few people who looks hot eating a cupcake. But deep down, Kelly also reminds us of the secret part of ourselves that feels, that knows, that we're special and that we deserve more, even if we're not nearly so shameless about getting it. And that is how it's done. This is The Take. What do you want our take on next? This video is brought to you by NordVPN, the ultimate resource in internet security and the best way to unlock the shows and movies you love from other regions. NordVPN secures your browser in seconds and never logs your data, so you know your online privacy is protected. NordVPN also offers CyberSec, an advanced ad blocking technology that significantly improves your browsing experience by removing annoying pop ups, video ads, and tons of content that doesn't interest you. CyberSec works to dramatically improve the load speed of pages you're visiting so you can watch your favorite workplace sitcom with no interruptions or buffering. So click the link in the description below, nordvpn.com/slash the take, 
for your last chance to get 70% off a three-year plan. If you enter the code THETAKE, you'll receive an additional month of NordVPN for free. 